Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. Let's take a few minutes this morning to be the church together. Today I have a reading for you from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 44, verses 9 through 11 and 17b. This is the word of the Lord spoken through Isaiah. All who make idols are nothing, and the things they treasure are worthless. Those who would speak up for them are blind. They are ignorant to their own shame. Who shapes a god and casts an idol which can profit nothing? People who do that will be put to shame. Such craftsmen are only human beings. Let them all come together and take their stand. They will be brought down to terror and shame. He prays to the idol and says, Save me, you are my God. Here ends the reading. Whenever I read some of the earliest stories of scripture, I'm reminded of how many gods are named or described. Every nation or people had multiple gods. This was a normal thing. Wikipedia lists at least 79 of these gods, and I'm sure there were many, many more lost to the sands of time. In early biblical tradition, God was in competition with these other gods. The first commandment given to the Israelites, after all, was, You shall have no other gods. Eventually, of course, the idea of these other gods fell away. They were revealed to be idols, fakes that drew people's attention away from the one true God. But even so, the ancient first commandment remains, no other gods. When Martin Luther wrote his catechisms, he could have skipped right past this commandment on his way to ones that still had more obvious importance, like not stealing and not murdering and so on. But no. For Luther, the first commandment is the most important one, the one from which all the other commandments follow. Luther knew that even if they were no longer considered gods, people were still attracted to idols. He wrote, That upon which you set your heart and put your trust, that is your God. Money, power, family, security, country, fame. There are many things we try to fit into our hearts. The human heart, it turns out, is a factory of idols. In fact, don't misunderstand me here, but I think perhaps one of our greatest and most dangerous idolatries is religion itself. Now, I'm not saying that religion is bad, obviously. It's a good thing to be part of a church community, a good thing to be part of a tradition, a good thing to be part of a faith with rituals and prayers and songs. The problem comes when we start to consider those things to be the most important part of faith. Then we are constructing an idol, not of stone or wood or metal, but of piety and practice. Isaiah reminds us this morning that nothing, not even things we think are good, should get in the way of God. All other things eventually fail. Worldly success fades. Money ceases to satisfy. People pass out of our lives. Prayers and songs and rituals come to an end. And when everything else stops, all that is left is Jesus Christ. Everything else, however enjoyable or tempting or beautiful or uplifting it may be, everything eventually gives way to the promise of God with us. When we cut through the idols in our lives, we can see that God has been there all along. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for your promise and your presence. Remind us that everything in this world is only second best, and there will come a time when all that remains is you. Keep our eyes fixed on you amid all the things around us, and move us to live lives that are centered on you. 
We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.